Good morning. We're going to be talking about Schrodinger's uh, model today. Um, it is Bohr's model was talking about the electron when it was matter. Schrodinger, on the other hand, was looking at the electron when it was a wave and what that would do to the orbital shapes. And he did a lot of math to figure some of this out. And uh, what he figured out is actually very accurate with what we see energy-wise later on. Um, so we're going to look at these orbitals and how he drew uh, the atom. We always start out with our nucleus. He said the lowest energy is if the electron exists in a spherical shape. So something like that, we can have two electrons in there. And we look at the shape of the orbital, and he named the shape. This one he named an S-shape orbital, which is easy because it looks it's a sphere, right? And so it's an S. It's also the first energy level that we have. So he called this the 1S orbital, first energy level with the shape of an S. And then we have up to two electrons. You can have a 1s1 if you have just one electron. Okay, that, that would be with this one. And a 1s2 if you have two electrons in it. Okay, any s orbital can only have two electrons. You cannot go higher than that. So once we get to that point, we have to go to the next energy level. So we would say we have our nucleus, we have our s orbital, and we fill that, so we have two, and then we have our second orbital, and we fill that. Okay, that one can also have two. So when I write that, that down, there's the 7 a.m. bell. There'll be another one in five minutes, all right. So when I write that down now, I write what I have first. I have my 1s2, this is known as the electronic configuration. Okay, when I'm writing it, instead of drawing it, we're writing the configuration of the electrons. And there are two in the 1s orbital, and there are two in the 2s orbital. So, and then two in the 2s orbital. Now, the electrons also have another effect that we call spin, and it tells us how they fit in these orbitals. For the s orbital, it's really easy. They just say you have one up spin and one down spin. Okay, and that's and then that's just the one they go on. So, and for this one, we have one up spin. We have here's the other one, one down spin. Okay, so these are looking at the electron spin here, and again, it just tells us how they fit in the orbital. It's not a huge deal with the s orbitals. When we get to the p and d orbitals, it will get to be more of a big deal. All right, um, so let's go to, we have those two filled now. Let's look at what the next shape is, because the next shape is where it got kind of surprising. You know, usually you, you put circles around things, and that's not a huge surprise. We have 1s2, we have 2s2, The next shape was kind of interesting. All right, it looked like that. And this is the flat model. If you look at the 3D model, it's three separate parts. You have the up-down part, which is like a ball and a ball or a balloon and a balloon that go up down. You have left and right, two balls together that go left and right. And this last one is the hardest one to draw, um, but if you can imagine I have one that's coming out towards me and one that's behind it going back into the page, so it's into the board. So in math we would draw this as the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Okay, so these there are three separate parts, the x part, the y part, and the z part here, that all come together to form this new, next shape, which we call a p orbital. Okay, 
Now the energy of this, if you notice, it is approximately the same size as the red one here, this one. And the energy is surprisingly similar, so we're going to keep them on the same level. There is no 1p, there's no energy for the p orbital that corresponds with the energy that this one is at. But there is a 2p that corresponds with this same energy. So we go 2p and we can put electrons in those shells so we can go up to 6. Now do I have to? No. If I only have Sorry, it's a little bit harder to draw on this than it is on my chalkboard. Ah, there we go. If I only have um, seven, then I'd go two in my red, two in my green, and that's four, and so then I'd go five, six, seven. All right? And I'd fill, and I only fill up to what I need to. I still have to draw the whole thing. You can't only draw three of the petals and then say you're done because you only need three. You have to draw all of it, but you can't, you only fill up to what you need. Now when we look at this spin, so we'd say this is 1s2, this is 2s2, whoops, sorry, 2s2, and this one has an upspin and a downspin, this one has an upspin and a downspin. Now we can look and see where this, uh, spin comes more into place. We have three parts to my p orbital, right, my x, y, and z part. When I put my spins in, I always put them in so that I fill it up first and then I go back and have them double up. So I'd go up spin, up spin, up spin, and then if I have more, I can come back and go down spin, down spin, down spin. You never do something like this. This is going to increase the energy before we need to. So it is always like this, not like this. All right. Now let's look at the periodic table and try to match it to this periodic table here. So I'm going to draw it uh, down here in this Right, down here in this corner really quick and then I'm going to try to highlight it over on my periodic table. I'll probably cover up some of these bottom elements and I'll just bear with me with that, sorry. Alright, so I've got my 1s2. If I look up here, this is my first period. You remember my periods are across, they're my rows, and there are two elements in there. Right, and I can put two electrons in my first uh, energy level, my first orbital. I have my second orbital, and it also can contain two, just like lithium and beryllium. I have my third, and it can contain six. Okay, so if I keep reading just like that, that I go row by row, and this was my 2s, which is on my second line, and this is my 2p, which is also on my second period. Okay, so if we keep, if we just keep following, my 1s will be on my first line, my 2s will be on my second line, my 2p is on my second line. So my next thing that I would expect would be this, and that's what it happens to be when we would say that this is 3s, and it can hold up to 2. The next thing is my 3p and I would draw another p. Okay, So it turns out that this mirrors it so precisely that we can actually say and we actually call this my s block and everything in here goes into s orbitals. This is my p block Okay, and these will be when we discover them. And everything in there goes to p orbitals. This is my d block. And this is my f block. And I will finish this up because this is getting a little bit long um, in my next video. But okay, just really quick, my f block. So my s block, my p block, 
my D block and my F block and I will finish it up in the next video.